In this video, I'll tell you how to get A plus for physics in SPF. Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be on how to get A plus in physics SPM. So let's get right into it. My first tip is to understand the basic concepts of physics. And the first basic concept here is the way you interpret a formula. Let me explain this by using an example of the formula P equals F over A, pressure equals to force over area. You have to know that in this case of the formula, P is directly proportional to F and inversely proportional to A. If a formula is multiplied, for example, potential energy equals to MGH, then that is directly proportional. If the formula is in division, as in the example I gave you, which is P equals to F over A, then the pressure is inversely proportional to the denominator. In this case, when F increases, P increases, and when A decreases, P will increase. This basic concept is something that every physics student should be very familiar with because everything in physics is based off of this concept, this directly proportional, inversely proportional concept. If you can understand it, then it, you're fine. The second basic concept is how you change from kilometer per hour to meter per second and vice versa. To change from kilometer per hour to meter per second, you have to divide by 3.6 and to change from meter per second to kilometer per hour, you have to multiply by 3.6. I hope that you really take note of what I said just now because that is an extremely popular objective question where they ask you to convert kilometer per hour to meter per second and vice versa. There are definitely other ways to do it. Um, there's the long way, but then if you use this way, you can use less than one minute to solve a question, which is how it should be for objective questions. You should never spend too much time doing the objective questions. The third basic concept that you need to know in physics is the way to interpret a graph. This is actually pretty simple. If there is a straight line passing through the origin, then it is directly proportional. If there is a straight line not passing through the origin, then it is linearly dependent. And if it is a curved line, then it is inversely proportional. Now let's move on to the second tip. Tip number two is to have a formula sheet or a cheat sheet for physics. Let me explain what a formula sheet is. Basically, a formula sheet is where you compile all the formulas of physics onto a piece of A4 paper or any paper at all so that you have everything in one place and one day before the exam, you can just review all the most important formulas from there. For physics, there are a lot of formulas in the syllabus, so it is definitely important to have all the formulas in one place so that you can refer to it when you are doing revision and you can review it one day before any exam. Don't worry about this though because I have already made a video where I compiled all the formulas in Form 4. In that video, I go through all the formulas in physics and I tell you what each variable stands for. So definitely check that out if you want to. That video should be up by now. I'll leave a link in the description box below so that it's easier for you to check that out. I have compiled all the formulas in Form 4. So if you can go through everything and try to memorize it, then you should be able to answer all the questions related to calculations. This brings me to my tip number three, which is to always get full marks for calculation questions. This is because in my opinion, the calculation questions are always the easiest to answer, whether in paper one or paper two. Now I will tell you the technique which I use to answer calculation questions. First of all, I make sure that I am very familiar with every single formula that is in the syllabus. I make sure that I am familiar with all the formulas and I Try to memorize it by reading it again and again, especially on the day before an exam. Now I will show you how I answer a calculation question with an example. For this question, I go through and pick out all the most important information, meaning I pick out the numbers and then I write the standard variable next to it. So given mass is 0.6 kg, I write a small letter m equals to 0.6 kg. I then represent the final velocity given with a small letter v and then since in this question the initial velocity is not given so we know that it is zero 
So I write down u equals to 0 ms minus 1. And then t equals to 0 0.03 seconds. Basically, what I did was I brought out all the most important information from the question and I represent it using the standard variable which I am familiar with. I do this to trigger my memory because I have read through the formula sheet but then uh, it's not guaranteed that I can remember everything. So now I refer back to the question to find out what they actually want us to find and in this particular question, they wanted us to find false. Since the question wants to find false, I just write down a capital letter F. And when I do this, I try to make the connection between the capital letter F, the small letter M, the small letter U and V and T. So because I've already read through the formula sheet, I just connect and try to trigger my memory and I will remember that the formula for F is M bracket V minus U over T. When I can come up with the formula, I simply substitute all the values which I have already listed down into the formula and then I can get the answer. I hope that that technique has helped you in some way. It is very important to answer all the calculation questions because objective paper is mostly on calculation. So if you can get full marks for objective paper, then it is definitely easier to get an A plus overall. Tip number four is to make sure that you always write the standard units for all the quantities. You have to make yourself very familiar with the units and especially with the standard units. Like if there is a question where they say mass equals to 400 grams, you have to immediately recognize that and change it to kg. M equals to 0 0.4 kg. This is just one of the ways which the question will trick you. If you forgot to convert the 400 grams to kg, you just use 400 as your mass value, then the whole question will just be wrong and you will never get the answer. This is just an example and there are many more questions where not changing the units to the standard units will cause you to lose mark. Learn all the formulas and be familiar with it until you don't have to like crack your head to remember which one is for which. Like it's best if you can see velocity and then you know that automatically, okay, the unit is ms negative 1 and then when you see pressure, you automatically think that it's pa. That is the way it should be. Tip number 5 is to make sure that you know what you need to memorize and memorize them. Physics is not a memorizing subject. I would say that it's more of an understanding subject. But then there are certain things that you need to memorize and recognize those things and make sure that you memorize them. Make sure that you go through the entire book for all the definitions, uh, laws and principles. Those are the things which are frequently asked and if you remember them, then you are guaranteed to obtain some marks. If you can score all the calculation questions and the definition questions, then you can definitely do well in physics. Like even if you panic and cannot remember how to do anything else, then the marks for calculations and definitions will definitely help you. Tip number six is to understand. I'm sure that you guys are aware that physics is an understanding subject. It requires thorough understanding, so you cannot do well if you don't understand anything. And I don't want to go on further about this because I'm sure you guys are aware about how important understanding is. So instead, I will talk about what you can do when you can't seem to understand what the teacher is saying. Like maybe you are feeling very sleepy or tired when your teacher is explaining a very important concept, then you should do this thing. If this happens in school, then I suggest that you try to write down everything that your teacher is saying. Like if your brain cannot even interpret which is important and which is not, then try to train yourself to write faster and write down everything that he or she is saying and then you can go back and read through and decide which is important and which is not. Maybe you cannot write down everything, but it's okay just write down everything that you can and then when you go back to revise for that particular section, you can read back um, and recall what she said so that it's easier for you to understand the topic by yourself. If this happens when you are in a tuition class, then maybe you can use your phone to record what your teacher is saying so that you can go back and listen to it when you are in a better state of mind. 
If you wish to do this, you have to make sure that your teacher is okay with being recorded. If he or she is okay with being recorded, then I think that recording is definitely a great way to cope with not understanding what is being taught at that particular moment because you can go back and listen to exactly what they were saying during that class. So it's definitely easier to understand. Even if you're coping along just fine with whatever your teacher is teaching at that moment, I still think that it's very important to take notes because there are a lot of things that we think we will remember at that point, but then in a while we will just forget. So, so definitely make it a habit to take note of important things. So for the moment, that's all the tips I have for physics. I hope that these tips were helpful to you. Remember to give this video a like if you found this video helpful and you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!